I use, I seek and find some brothers. They might be true to their roots, but I'm the type of man just rocking, knocking boots on the regular. Check it, yo, that's what I like. All I need is the gates and my motherfucking mic. Yo, all it takes is David Carradine of Kung Fu. I'm quiet, I keep to myself, staying true. I never get drastic, the mic is like a hatchet. Heads on the floor, take aim, smash it like I'm Jason. Filler, body don't you feel Got the bitches in my house, I definitely start to feel her. I make money illegal, some call me dope dealer. I still look flavor when I focus in the mirror. Check it, I'm more experienced. On the mic, I'm serious. Try to act well. In the battle, I get furious. Punk, I'm more rentable. Rhymes be rentable. Everywhere we go. Like tracks, all types. Same dollars, no sense. Fuck the that mic in the back. Right. night yo i was just playing a little bit of 1998 to my legendary brother dj k slay who passed last easter uh that was one of his mixtapes called the play hate eliminator that was ea ski and black rob coming up um tonight's gonna be a good night hip-hop we got somebody on that I haven't seen in so many years, but we've been talking the last couple of weeks. I always respect this brother. There's a lot that I have to learn about him myself. I don't profess to know everything. And um, I don't know where he's at. Is he playing hide and seek right now? Ladies, yeah, listen, we just might as well just get to it. What up, Just Ice? Peace. You gotta put yourself on the camera now. <laughs> My yeah, yeah, brother. yeah, 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 yeah. Peace. <laughs> What's going on? Just ice in the building. Yes, yes, yes. What's going on, man? Peace. First of all, my brother, I want to say this. I want to thank you for your contribution to the culture of hip-hop. Okay? Appreciate it. There's a lot of things that people don't know about you. A lot of things I don't know about you. Right. And um, we're going to have a conversation of me asking you questions of things I might know and things we all should know all on a positive tip. We're going to stay all positive in your career. Right, right, right. Now, I know you that sleeping bag records with Will and Fresh Records and, and all yeah, that. Yeah. Will and Junkie Gales and all that. And Ron Resnick. And Ron yeah, Resnick. Yeah. Resnick. But first of all, you was born in Ray, you was born in Brooklyn. Yeah, Fort Green. Brooklyn Fort Hospital. Green and, and then you moved to the Bronx. Well, actually, 
my um grandmother lived first on um what do you call it like uh one sixteenth right down a, right down a block from the mosque okay that's Harlem in, in Harlem right right, right. where the mosque that's my mother that's, that's, where Harlem well was that's my mother's mother right she that's my grandmother so we was there but then she moved up to Castle Hill in um the seventies something like that okay so. It was a commute. It was from now. It was no longer from Brooklyn to Manhattan. It was from Brooklyn to the Bronx. So you you would live with your grandmother. I was going back and forth, going back and forth. Okay. It was at one. It was at one point. I was living in Castle Hill, and going to school in Brooklyn, having to get up every fucking morning at four thirty. Wow. To go to school. What school did you go to? I was in public school, PS three hundred seven. Okay. In the back of Farragut Projects. Okay. That's where I went. My that's, that, that that was my primary school, because I always thought you was from the Bronx. Well, my grandmother, my grandmother, she um, she worked up there at PS thirty six. And when I moved up there with her, I was already in junior high school. So I went to um one seventy four IS one seventy four, over there on White, White Plains Road, like right in between Soundview and Castle Hill. So you was a you, so you was a barrel to barrel kid back in the day, moving around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because first of all, I couldn't stand the music in Brooklyn. Couldn't stand it. When guys came outside to play in Brooklyn, they would play this radio music that I hear every morning before I go to school, and I'm like, yo, this is not what I'm. And when I came to the Bronx, see, I got introduced to hip hop in like I think 1975. My, I went to my aunt's house, right? She lived right. in Hunts. She lived in Hunts Point, the old Hunts Point on, over there on Bryan Avenue. Okay. Right? Like like ten sixty eight Bryan, those type of numbers back like, then. Yeah, over there. No, no, on, on, on the side of Al's Way. Oh, okay. With the way. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come back, come back, come back. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was me and K Slay favorite place to go to. All right. The Wedge. Yeah. Now. Before it was the Owl's Wedge, it was something else. I forgot. But that's how long she lived around there. Well, we all and know what Hunts Points was about yeah, you anyway. Know, I'm not even going to go into that. But see, it was like, she used to throw like Thanksgiving dinners for the family. We would come over there. I had to be no more than eight, seven, eight years old, nine years old, some shit like that. We would go over there for family dinners. And you know, after a while, the play would go on. Right? And then all of a sudden her neighbors will come in to join the party. And I've never heard B, um, how can I say, how can I put it for, for, for expression back then? I've never heard, back to fuck that, I've never heard hip hop until I've heard it then. Back then, 1975, some shit like that, that's the first time I heard Baby Huey. That's the wow. first time I heard Watt, that's the first time I heard Watt Stacks. You know we lose, we losing. I, I and, and, I'm and I'm going to interview, and I'm going to interview Charles Wright from Watt Stacks next week. Hey, Express right. yourself. See, I was a young boy, and, and, and check this out, your van. Let me say how I heard this music was because my man Pee Wee, he said, "All right, Justice, I got to clean my room. Sit your ass down in the corner." So I said, "Now, which Pee Wee? Pee Wee dance or another Pee Wee?" No, nah, my man Pee Wee from um um. From from um okay. from Hunts Point, not not okay me, okay that's different people yeah. okay. My man Pee Wee, he was like, "Yo, Justin, I got to clean my room. Sit your ass down." All right, so I sat down in the corner and he just started playing records. Hey, yo, Van, I know some other records that he played. I'm just not going to mention them because I have them now. After like about 20 years, I found them, but that's how I learned hip hop or I heard my first hip hop from but going to my family's house back in '75 in Hunts Point. And her friend's sons coming over, taking over the turntable because it wasn't no mixing shit. It was just a regular BSR McDonald. Wow. And after that, and everybody, and, I mean, and I listen, everybody going, got. Huh? Huh? I said everybody got great stories growing up. Uh, a quick I mean, shout that's out to how my man. To me. Uh -huh. That's how. I mean, it got to the point where as. I used to still go to school in Brooklyn in the seventh grade and get there early in the morning, just early enough to pull out the turntable and play some King Everson, have a nice day. Them people were dancing, didn't know what the hell they was dancing to. Right. 
And we used to buy those records just to get one record. I used to buy an album. I used to get buy an album just to get a 15 second break. Right, just a break. <laughs> Shout out to my man Rico Don out in Phoenix, Vegas from Philly. That's my brother. I got to connect with him. We got a lot of things to do. But listen, let's get to you getting into hip hop. We talked about this before. What was your avenue? Sound Masters. Sound Masters in Castle Hill. The Sound Masters. That's how I got my connection with hip hop. And who was down with the Sound the Masters? The original Sound Masters was DJ Pill, uh, DJ D. And um, see, back then, it was like about 15 DJs and 20 MCs. It was a lot of us. I started out DJing. Right, but I couldn't get no light DJing because it was so many damn DJs. I was very, very impressed when I heard Melly Mel on the mic because back then you had Bambada and you know you had Lisa Lee and Pow Wow, you had the Funky Four. And all. None of them really impressed me. When I heard Melly Mel on the mic, I was like, "Yo, I can get with that. The voice is deep, and he's saying some stuff, you know." That I could really, I remember, man, I still remember this rhyme. I'm not going to say it, but Melly Mel inspired me to a point whereas I wanted to write rhymes, but not just see Dan run, 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 get the gun. None of that. Right. I wanted to put, I wanted to put words in there that would express exactly what I'm saying without sounding too simple or too intricate. And I still do that to this day because you have to understand the people that's buying your music, the people that's listening to your music, you have to know some of them don't have a high level of education or some of them, they just have a low, not even low, but just an average. And I already know my vocabulary is beyond average. So I make my I make my music whereas everybody can understand it, especially ghetto. I try to keep it ghetto. I don't have to try. I keep it ghetto. My, my wife says everything I say come out my mouth is ghetto. So you know everything is ghetto. That's how I see it. That, and that and when I started writing those rhymes, that's when I started getting inspired with, through Melly Mel, and then I heard Cool Mo D. I was like, like wow. This brother's vocabulary is incredible, and everybody in the fucking street understand what he's saying. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe they don't have a low education level. They just refuse to use it. <laughs> now let, let, let's 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 give let's let's give props to a lot of the brothers early in the game that might have been in the parks, been on the microphone, but never got out them, never got out that area. And those are the brothers. Those, see, Van, right there. Those are the brothers that I like to hear. When we was back in the days in the park, yo, these records, I, yo, I remember when I first heard the first rap record, I was like, oh, they go to hip hop game. Yo, the parks, you hit it on the head with the hammer, dog. The parks, the, the parks, especially when it got dark. In the and summertime? That, and that, and that and yo in the bass from the in the bass from the from from the from the beast was just and then you had the b-boys out there breaking the real b-boys breaking i mean fucking up their sneakers and they pants and all of that and you know so crazy if you was in castle hill if mario was in 123 if bambada was in bronx river if cool herc was in echo park if brothers disco on the funky four was over here if AJ was in St. Mary's Park, if Mean Gene was in 63 Park, if Love Bug was in Forest, Forest uh, Park, if if uh, Rock and Rob was in Patterson Park, yo, do you know how many parties was going on in the summer? Yo, to me, I ain't gonna lie. The best outside parties I've ever been to was Disco King Mario. I've been to a few Disco King Mario parties out in Bronxdale. I've been to I've, I've been to fucking 123 enough times when Disco King Mario was in there. And and, and rest 
rest in peace to our brother Disco King Mario. Disco King and, Mario, the Big Mac crew, the Mayberry crew, and the Chuck City crew. And we got to say rest in peace to Tyrone, the mixologist, Cool D's brother who passed last year. Hey, going way, way, hey, yo, hey, yo, man, going way, way back. Peace to the brother Ed LaRock. Yeah. A, an original. You know, Africa Islam homie. That's Africa, Is that's Africa Islam homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Bro, yo, people don't know. This shit go deep in the fuck. Yo, it goes deep. It goes deep. The Mayberry crew, Africa Islam. I was talking to Donald D today. He's, he's that's my dude, Donald D. That's my man. He's in the state chair. You know, Africa Islam took Busy B uh, to meet Mario for his first party. It's a lot of st good stories out here, Just. I remember, yo, I remember me and Theodore was talking. Theodore, used, Theodore was like, yo, Just, I remember back in the days, Mario would play, and he would be like, yo, little nigga, I'm coming, so I'm going to send an OJ for you. And he would send an OJ for him and go get him. And when Theodore got there, the crates would be ready because he was too short to reach the mixer. Right. He was, yo, because me and Theodore used to live right across the park from each other. So me, me and Theodore, I will always be, a th matter of fact, Theodore is the one who hooked up my damn laptop. He said, just as soon as you get that shit, bring it to my house. He told me where to go buy it and everything. Really? Theodore's my man. You crazy? The me and Theodore live right across the park from each other. And you know what's so funny, Just? I, I, I told somebody special you was going to be here tonight. Right, right. <laughs> uh, man, somebody Tuan really special. I see Tuan Boogie on there. But somebody really special hold on a second i hate surprises bro. Nah, but brother, you don't like this one this is somebody that that go way back where you at man pete nice from third base hey yo oh shit pete oh what up guys <laughs> what's hey, happening yo, yo, yo. Pete oh looks, my god. Hey Pete looks civilized now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm trying to get the sound up here. All right, Word, I got no you. Man, Yo, how I, you been, Jack? Surprises, but this is a good one. This Yo, I, you just bought, you're talking about Disco King Mario. Holy shit. Hey yo. <laughs> Hey, yo, people don't understand, man. People everybody don't know how far way back. Everybody want chat about Herc did this and Herc started this. I mean, I give Herc his props, but yo there are pictures and videos of Herc being at Mario's parties in the early 70s. Right. You know, but like, I'm not, I, you know I, what, to be honest, man, I don't see that as a bad thing at all. That just contributes more to the fucking history. Right. So how, but you like, a, like as a people, you go, you go so far way back. That's why when you did that record, people just didn't know how far back you actually went. And it's incredible that well, your history. To be honest, to be, hey, hey, yo, I'm going to keep it real with you, dog. I kept it real simple. See, if I would have started saying shit about Mario and the, the nigga, remember the nigga twins? Yes. Right. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Keith, yes. Yeah. Remember the nigga twins? Yeah. It was just yeah. with us not too long ago. See what I'm saying? If I would have started talking about shit like that back in the 80s, <laughs> come on. Right. <laughs> 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 I mean, well, you know, I don't know everything about hip hop, but all I know is from what I know from 1974 on up. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I mean, I mean like the great blackout of 1977. I'll never forget that shit. Incredible. You know? But you know, for for me being a little bit younger when hold you dog. When I, when I saw you at the Latin Quarter with DMX doing Gangster Hip Hop and Latoya, right, you know, right. for me, you were my favorite MC. And for all other people that I was down with, like before Rakim, it was you. For straight up, so I give appreciate, you props. So until the yo, day yo, I yo, die. Yo, yo, In other words, now now it's Rakim then me, right, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and then the other thing with Lumumba, we got to rest in peace, Lumumba, because when Lumumba came to me and my boy Kiway, and he he wanted to manage us, and he said that he was fucking with Just Ice. Yeah, he was fucking. We were like, we're like, we're well, down, we're down. He tried to call himself my manager. 
<laughs> well, that, that's what I'm saying. He told us he was your manager. And I know he was getting you some shows. But, but like, that, that was incredible. Let me, give you a quick, let me give you a quick story about Lumumba, how far back we go. My mother used to work for his father. Oh, shit. At, 40, at, 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 at the Board of Education at 40. His father had an office. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but Sonny Carson had an office at 44 Court Street on the same floor as the Board of Education. <laughs> wow. And my mother used to be a teacher, so I used to go there sometime, whatever, when she had to go over there to the Board of Education. And somehow or another, she wound up working for him under the Board of Education for Sonny. For Sonny. It, you know, it wasn't because, and it was, the reason why I bring that up is because when I met with Lumumba and he told me who his father was, I'm like, wait a minute, you mean Sonny, 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 Sonny? <laughs> right. Like, my mother, my mother used to work for this dude. You know, I never, it's, it's, it's I real, never knew that's funny. how you hooked up with them. Huh? I never knew that's how you hooked up with them. Well, no, how I hooked up with them. I mean, to be honest, man, it was me, Labumba, uh, driving a Walter, and that's a Sonic. Right, right. No, because that was the whole thing. Walter and the Aerostar with Stetson yeah, Sonic. Yo, yo, oh, you know about the Aerostar? Holy of shit. Of course. I was in the Aerostar. I used to, Lumumba used to drop me off to, to, to school in the Aerostar after uh, LQ. Are you serious? Yeah, like 4 o'clock in the morning. Yes, that sounds like, that sounds about right. <laughs> exactly. I, I was in the LQ and DMX came up to me, thought I was MCA from the Beastie Boys. Oh, the shit. first time that Lumumba brought me in there to see you. See, that shit was crazy. Kind of shit I like to hear. Now, because... question. Now, hold on. Just like somebody told me to ask you about being a crew out in Far Rockaway. Oh, yeah. You motherfucking right. The <laughs> mighty, mighty A-team. Now, you tell them if they listen, you respond. The mighty, mighty A-team. Just Ice. Be yourself. Um, who was the other MC? Um, PJ. We was the original hot, cool, and vicious. That's when I started putting my name, Sir Vicious. It's even in the first record. Put the Hamill Hamill Project? Hamels, Hamels, Hamels forever. Right. Hamels. Yeah. Wow. Hamels Project. Yeah. Just I be myself, PJ, my man DJ Spade. My, hey, yo, Mr. T had the sound system. Matter of fact, Mr. T had an amp back then that'll fuck niggas up now. The Crown 10,000 self-analyzing amp. The fucking amp corrects itself. Wow. Hey, dude, look, 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 we get some justice. You see, I told you we're going to learn something from them. I know. I, I know. We Listen, we've been trying to track you down for a while. I stay the fuck. Yo, yo, dog, I stay hitting. I stay hitting. Oh, I, I said we've been trying to track you down for a while. And I say I stay hidden because I do not play well with others. But you know, Van, Van, Van still Van still finds everybody at some point. Hey, yo, Van is the man. I, yo, I give Van enough respect for phone shit. Van older than me, man. You can't say nothing to that brother. Well, you know, how about Rap Mania? Let's talk about Rap Mania. Okay, I wish I could have got him for there, but the label was acting funny. Huh? His label was well, acting you, funny. Well, you know, Just was. That, was that Rap Mania? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah. But you didn't perform. But you he didn't perform. There. But he was there. When the fuck was this? I smoke a lot of weed. If you, listen, there, there's a picture of me, you, Herc, Lovebug, and LL. That was in uh, Rap Masters, I think it was. That's in New York, right? Yeah, yeah. Apollo. But I did Apollo. Okay, you got, you got wait, your wait, yellow wait, 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 Walkman. Yeah, yeah. You got 90, your Walkman. 1990. Come on, man. Yep, 1990. Come on, dog. I must have consumed at least fucking a million five blunts by it. What? <laughs> <laughs> 1990. Oh my god. I, and you know what? Just, I, was, I, I was talking to you about that. I, I was talking to you about that hat. Did you find that hat well, yet? I well, I have two of them. Like I say. I have two of them because um, the other four or five got destroyed. My kittens pissed in them, so I had to throw them away. Oh, shit. Well, well, I'll tell you one thing. If a 
you don't feed your kittens before you leave the house. Don't leave your fucking hats out. Well, <laughs> but I mean, yo, your those hats were such a signature of just ice. You know, I still, you could just I see you from behind. You know, it's you. I still have two of them. I still have two of them. Word. Wow. But I mean, just just taking it back to you. I mean, as me as an MC coming up. I mean, for so many people at that time, you were the top of the food chain. You know, without without a doubt, and all respect due to you. Actually, I hooked up with Herc's brother, okay. and we were talking on the phone, and he didn't know it was me. That I told him it was Pete Nice. He's like, he's like, yo, we met at Rap Mania, so he broke out pictures of us at Rap Mania, and I he said you you shouted out my brother when you guys were on stage, and I had to go back to the tape from Van and see that we, we shout out Herc. And he had one of the original flyers from 75 at Herc at the Hevelo. Whoa. And he had the flyer that he stuck up on his wall in his room. And get, guess what he wrote on that flyer? What? Your line from going way back. I'm lying. Right on the flyer. Yeah. I'm lying. 75 out of black plays. <laughs> You know, go way back, way back to Herc and, you know, with Herc and Bam. He, that whole line, he wrote it right on the flyer, had it hanging up on his wall. So, but but like I said, most people wouldn't know that you went back to 123 and to the parks and the Bronx back at the, back at that time in Town Masters. Hey, yo, Pete, hey, yo, Pete, in response to homie writing that, I, I look at it like this here. Thank you. There's no bad publicity, <laughs> all right? Exactly. There's no bad publicity. I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here pissed. Nah, he broke with Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. You know what I'm saying? I call him like I see it. He don't like it. Fucking suck, suck my neck. You know what I mean? So, so when you wrote "Going Way Back," did anybody give you names, or you just that was just? Oh no, man! When you... I wrote "Going Way Back," I was sitting down at my table. I had a big plate of French toast, sizzling beef bacon and three scrambled eggs. As I was eating, I was writing. I was just thinking of all my experiences. So if I got something wrong to somebody that they don't like, you know, fuck it, so what? My left nut. Sue me. What the fuck do you want me to do? I don't care about that. I don't care about that shit. Don't let me because I'm like, I'm like one of the yo, first records like that, that really gave a lot of props yo, yo, to hey, yo, people. Pete, yo, yo, Pete, yo, Van. My new shit is out. My new shit out. What I'm gonna do? Oh, we gotta check after it. We finish, after, after we finish this, um, we get we, the, the emails, and I will send you a copy of it. All right. Me and Matt, me and Matt Tron has got some new shit that's out. That's kicking ass overseas right now. I'm not really concerned about what's going on over. Oh. Sure, yo, a shout out to Sam Sever too. Okay. Yes. I don't I haven't yes, seen you I gotta haven't shout seen, out I Sam. I haven't seen Sam in years. Right, but the, but that's the other reason when we started working with Sam and I knew that Sam had worked on LaToya with you. Right. That's all I had to hear with that too. You know, that, that just bet, said it all right there with his know, skill. Hey, Can you find Sam Sever's name on that record for the credits? I don't think it is. Yes, it is. You just don't know. <laughs> Look for Biggie Rat and the Itchy Brother. Oh, what's that? Biggie Rat is Mantronics, and Itchy Brother is Sam Sever. Right, right. Well, he used to tell me crazy stories about him and Curtis. Like, they would do I'm this shit called there. perching I'm on not, people. I'm not, I'm not going there. <laughs> I ain't going there. Van, what's going on, bro? Listen, and I'm listening to you and Pete talking. These are great. These people are loving this here. Easy LaRock is on there, Pete. Uh, Sparky D is on. Shout out to Sparky D. Sparky's on there? Yeah, she's listening. Hey, yo, tell Sparky I said enough respect. Enough respect. Enough respect. Easy. What up, Sparky D? Easy, easy, easy Rockwell is, here, is on checking out. My man Rico, we got a lot of people checking out. Hey, tell them everybody want to ask said, any questions. Yo, enough respect, everybody that's everybody that's tagging in, yo, enough respect, man. Because like I, yo, I always say, it's not about the 
the person that's spitting the rhymes. It's about the people that's hearing them and enjoying them. Because if it wasn't for them, who, who gives a fuck about what you're saying? Right. So for all the people that's tagging in right now, from Just Ice, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And what I what what I really want to go into real quick, because like we like I spoke Sir, to you, we're gonna keep everything on some real musical side of what you've done. Um, like uh, we know Paradise and and and, and uh, Pete is the uh, curators for the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Right, right, right. And give a shout out to our brother Paradise, who who who's definitely you know Dice had you at the LQ. Hey yo. Man, let me tell you. And, and it took so many other places. Pete, how often do you talk to Dice? What's that? How often do you speak to Dice? Every day. Hey, every day. Me and Dice's relationship goes way back to some damn music. I had nowhere to fucking stay or sleep or, or shower. In Castle Hill, right? Nah, nah, nah. Paradise. The high bridge? No. And, you mean with, with Paradise? You mean Paradise from the quarter, right? Yeah, yeah, because he, he was ah, on Eastern man, Parkway man, later. Paradise used to take me to his mom's crib and, and yeah. bathe and eat and all. What? Nah, was that on Eastern Parkway? This, and, yo, and this is after this is after the Lumumba days, or right? Right. Oh, the, okay, okay. That's why. Oh, I, yo, wow. Yo, the music thing with Dice is cool, but Dice got a, yo, Dice got a big fucking heart, man. He got a big Definitely. heart. Definitely. He, he he does. He's 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 unbelievable, you know and I know saying? he loves you. So we gotta hook you guys up. That's my dog. We'll get you on the phone with him tomorrow. Give me a call. I get I get what's tomorrow? I get oh I'll, I'll be back in the house after six. Just holler at me. Okay, we'll definitely do that. He he would love to talk. I told him I told him that Van had connected with you. And he was really excited to, to, to catch up with you. Right, right, right. And, you know, we've been, with the, with the museum, we've been tracking down a lot of the artifacts. So we've been, we hey, tracked yo, down on. some That's flyers. Preacher Earl? That's Preacher Earl? I'm going to call Preacher Earl tomorrow. Hey, yo, you, yeah, yo now, now you want to hear some stories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Preacher Earl, that is my dog. <laughs> Preacher Earl is my dog. Oh, you want to talk about a real nigga in the street? You know it. <laughs> I looked That's at his number dog. today. Hey, yo, big I up. Hey, yo, big today. up. That's how I'm going to call him. Big up Tila Rock. Big up Tila Rock. Because if it wasn't Most for Tila Rock, I would have met Preacher Earl. And you know so you know so funny? I just dropped a two-minute interview that I did with Tila Rock in 1991 to just tonight on my Don't Instagram. Work. I dropped one with Cisco, which is Cisco. I dropped one with Love Bug and Islam, because I got like these tapes from 1991. I just put a little minute or two up, and I just put I uh, just put Tila Rock up tonight. That's my dog. And see, a lot of people don't know Tila Rock goes way back, like you do, just you know, right? So I, think, story. I think to be honest, because T's older than me, he might know a little bit more. Okay, put it like this here: where T grew up at. He's older than me, so he might know more about it on that side. That's right. But he talks about saying. 1974, you, that's, too. That's what I'm saying. When you fuck up upon a, a budget in this business, and he's older than you, and he has knowledge of this business who's, who's knowledgeable, you just sit back and you listen. You act like a fucking tree. You just sit back and you grow and you listen. Exactly. That's how, how I do it. It's like, when because coming up this year, and I'm um, September... There's a show with Just Ice, Mantronics, and DMX alongside Sugar Hill Gang. You said alongside DMX? Mel alongside Melly Mel and Mr. Ness. You said DMX? Well, they call him Max? Scorpio. They call him Scorpio. I always call him motherfucker. That's my nigga, Mr. Ness. Yeah, DMX is beatbox. My, not, my beatbox. Not DMX, yeah, my beatbox. dogs beatbox. Huh? No, Van was saying DMX. I said DMX, Just Ice DMX. Oh, yeah. Oh, beatbox. The, the beatbox oh, okay. DMX. The original. The original DMX. No, no, no. Okay, the yeah, well, Melly Mel and Scorpio no, no. and the no, no, Sugar Hill no, no, Gang no, no. work together. The original, Melly DMX, Scorp the, original, the original DMX is Davey DMX. Right. Oh, right, right, right. But the second DMX, 
DMX, just age, DMX is your DMX. DMX. Because of his age would be Dark Man Unknown. That would be DMX Earl Simmons. Right. My B-Box is DMX. I call him the third yeah. one because of the age. But technically, when we came out in 86, there was no DMX Earl Simmons doing shit. Right. But that's what I'm saying. It's going to be me, Mantronics, and DMX, Sugar Hill Gang, Melly Mel, and um, Miss, Mr. Ness, Scorpio. Dude, what is that show? It's in um, September in um, Helmont. It's like 40 miles outside of Amsterdam. Okay, okay. You will well, Scorpio books all the shows anyway for them, so. But um, let me tell you something, man. Hey, yo, Van, you should, yo, you can appreciate this. <clears throat> as many years as I've listened to Flash and the Melly Mel and Sugar Hill Gang and everything, I've never performed with them. It is a fucking honor. It's an honor for me to perform even if I have to open up for them. I don't, I don't give a fuck if, I mean, I know Sugar Hill Gang went through their changes of different... No, you know, no, well, well, actually, it's, it's Mike is, Mike's been sick. So it is Master G and Hen Dog's been there for years. And um, the... See, but uh, I'm talking about, I understand that. It's just a pleasure for me, just, just you know, just the fucking name. Just right. Mantronics, DMX, Sugar Hill Gang. Melly, come on, dogs. I never performed Melly. Yo, I can't wait to get finished with my motherfucking show just so I can see Mel perform. Well, you know, Mel, Scorpio, and the Sugar Hill Gang is one unit. They one unit. I know. So they, 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 but they got, they, especially when they do that, 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 they, they, when they do their battle record. Well, they just do a whole show overseas. They, they do like 50 to 80 dates overseas every year. They go kill it. Yeah. They go kill it. That's so you're going to have, you're going to have fun. Yeah, anybody else, I would like, yo, I'm not opening up for you sons of bitches. But for them, and if it's, them, and if it's, it's a festival, them. and if it's a festival, then you're playing in front of 40,000 people. Nah, nah, it's inside Urban Matters, inside the um, we we do it every year. Oh, okay. It holds like about four thousand people. Oh, okay. Yo, trust me. And every every time I'm there, I turn up. Just wow. I turn up, and this year. I can't wait because of who's coming on after me. I'm going to leave a fucking shit stain on the stage. <laughs> Cole getting dumb. Oh, that's just it. Cole getting dumb is just the beginning. The new right. record that me and Mantronis got is called Get Your Drink On, Get Your Freak On. All right, I got to hear that. I'm a, Definitely got to hear that. Do, what we do is when we finish with this, you send me the emails. And I'll send it to you tonight or tomorrow. Right now, I'm still, I'm still working on two bottles of champagne and a fat blunt. So I, I, that's tonight, expected. That's expected with just ice. If it don't <laughs> happen tonight, if it don't happen tonight, it'll happen tomorrow. Because so vicious. Every, everybody who get drink, get your drink on, get your free. Hey, you know, let me let me ask you a question. When you when you called uh, yourself so vicious, like they were saying that uh, Mario. Would, would say vicious. Like, Busy B always says he would say he was vicious. Nah. Like, the word vicious was something that Mario always said. Sir Vicious comes from, okay, I don't know if you're proficient in kung fu movies, but it was a movie called The Hot, The Cool, and The Vicious. Oh, okay, okay. And we got real pissed off when Salt and Pepper came out with that shit because we had it, we put everybody in Far Rockaway and Hamels knew about the A-Team and the Hot, the Cool, and the Vicious way before they came out with their album, The Hot, the Cool, and the Vicious. Word. And I was so vicious. Trust me. You didn't want to touch the mic against me then? You definitely don't want to do it now because I just... I could just wear a shirt called Disrespectful and be proud <laughs> of it. Word. Wow. Question. Hip hop will be hip hop will be fifty officially August eleventh. So all these years, I'm years the, all these years and decades, some a lot of our brothers are not here. You know, that's fucking yeah, yeah. That's touching. That's How do touching. you feel that you know? We, I mean, a, a, anything can happen, but even though the, it's twenty twenty three, and a lot of people want to say it's fifty. How do you feel to still be here? Well, now, now, I like that, man. Nobody never asked that shit before. That could be some real 
You're mostly touching shit. You know what I mean? Every fucking you know, morning, I wake up, and this is just to me. Me and my wife been together for 21 years. Maybe she know it, maybe she don't. People who know. Every morning when I wake the fuck up, and I take that first breath, whew, I'm thankful. I ain't thankful to nobody in the sky. I'm not thankful to nobody spiritual. I'm just Thank thankful you. to wake the fuck up. That's how I value myself. Thankful to wake up, go out there, be productive, take care of your family. Not a teenager anymore. You're not in your fucking 20s and your, in your early 30s. It's responsibility. I have responsibilities and I own up to the responsibilities. It's all about taking care of the family first and everything else afterwards. That's how I see that. And, and, and it was so crazy because I do the same thing every morning, you know, that first breath. As I was looking at that football player last week laying on that field, I said to myself, he could be my grandson. Not even my son. He's 24. I got grandkids his age. <laughs> hey, yo, Van was in a different place. It could have been you. Yeah. Yeah. See? You <laughs> have to be, yo, everything else comes second and I don't know if it took me a long time to learn it or I learned it at the right time because there's really no book on how to grow up. There's no book on how to grow up. I mean, you might see some stupid ass books in the library from Barnes and Noble about how to be a parent, how to do this, how to do that. It all comes down to the individual. Yo, King's son, peace, brother. I see you. I see you. Oh Yo, shit, son! It all, it all, it all, it all, it all up, comes son? down to it all comes down to intelligence. It all comes down to intelligence. It all comes down to experience and intelligence. I mean, at a certain point, you got to put the childish things away. King Sun's out here just like what you want me to do, baby. I can't make a history. Me. King Sun's no, out I'll, here. I'll, I'll holler at King Sun later, man. Okay, that's my that, that, that's my brother, but not right now. That's my brother. And I love him. I love him. I love the shit out of King. That's the problem. I talk to him later though. There you go, King. We love you, baby. So listen, because like I said, we ain't gonna be long out here. Um, we definitely got to get trip to the Revolution Hip Hop and to the museum. Um, I'm gonna email you that new record too. I'm gonna email us when, when we get off of this. Um, we get the record. <laughs> One other thing I want to ask you before we go. What's up? And I don't know if you talked to Daddy O lately, but when you did the self destruction project, what was your feeling then? And a lot of people's trying to revive it now. Well, I, I it was like yesterday. First of all, <laughs> first of all, and Carly didn't even want me on it. Really? No, she didn't want me on that shit. Because they thought nah, man. she was too gangster for it. Like her, her exact words was, "Oh, just ice? No, he's too hard." Wow. wow. But I got support from the brothers that I knew that we all got. You know, we all was cool with each other. But I got a certain support from them that night that I didn't know I had. I think the first person was because um, I think the, the first person who said it was uh. I think it was Dougie. If it wasn't Dougie, it was. It couldn't have been Heavy. Heavy said it later. I think Dougie was like, well, if Just Ice is not going to be on it, I'm not going to be on it. And then Heavy D was like, well, if Just and Dougie not going to be on it, I'm not going to be on it. It was a big thing that night. I don't remember the order, but it went like that. And I was just standing there looking like, oh, shit. And Carly had no choice but to say, like, okay, okay, he could be on it. All right? I had a verse already written up, but since she was already complaining that I was too hard, I dumbed it down. And that's why that verse sounds like that. To me, that verse is soft as shit. Wow. That's, not what, I really, that's not what I originally wanted to say, but that's what was 
just said, and I want to get on the record, and I'm glad that I said it, and I'm glad it came out like that, because at that particular time, compared to right now, I did not fully understand the meaning of that record. I understood it to a point, but not to the point where I understand it now. So I'm glad that I said that verse because it went right in line with the record. Because if I would have said something different, going in a different direction, it would have been contrast to the record. And let me, I like to say shout out to Busy B who's checking in. Yo, that's my, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, you tell Busy, man, you called me, man. You called me. <laughs> that's my man, Busy, well, man. Hey, yo, I remember back in the days, right? You used to go to the um, Ecstasy Garage. And as soon as you walk in, you see Busy B on this big ass ladder in the middle, right, 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 right in front of the stage with the mic fucking with people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I remember those days, man. Big up to my man, Busy B Starsky. And also, well, you know what, yo, just what, guys, yo, a lot, a lot of people love you, brother, because you, you, like when we talk, you talk about you doing other type of music, like reggae music now and stuff like that. A lot of people love you because you took yourself away. Well, I, I never took myself away because yard music is what brought me here. Yard music, but yo, um, it's like before I was even DJing with the Sound Masters. I mean, at the age of. And trust me, now, here you go, Van. I mean, Pete, this might be a little too deep for you because you're too young. <laughs> no, you're all about the same age. Don't, 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 no, you and Pete about the same age. Don't get it messed hey, up. Yo, Pete, how old are you? How old are you? I'm 55. I'm 57. Those two years made a difference. All right, well, you then. got a couple of years <laughs> on. <laughs> hey, yo, Van. Hey, no, we ain't. Up, Pete. Yo, ask how old I am. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> I think you like about, what, 61? A little further than that, brother. 63. Nope. Four. 65 this year. Well, you look 65 good. 65 is still yo, alive. Yo, 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 Van, you look good, brother. Keep, whatever you're doing, keep it up. Thank you. Whatever you're doing, keep it up, man. You look good. Now, here goes something. Remember way back, remember the suitcase record players? Oh, Lord. <laughs> I think I, I still go back have one. It. Hey, yo, remember, yo, yo, hold on, Van. And I'm not lying. Remember the record players that used to come with the little television connected to, and you could put a slide in there and watch it and play the record? Yeah. Or even you could t remember those? I, have I remember reggae records. I have reggae 45s, five inch, five inch. I used to, I, that I got back from way back from fucking um, UK, five inch, not seven inch, five inches. If I play them right now at a party, the fucking people will go nuts. Brother, you, you have a lot with you that a lot of people don't understand because we have a life outside of hip-hop. You know, like, when people look exactly. at Pete, 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 people look at Pete as third base, but the people who know that Pete was an avid baseball card collector, you know, yeah, hip hop. Yo, a, yo, man, I understand perfectly. That, and that's the, the point that I'm trying to make. And I wish it was a way I could get it over to a lot of the fans because the artists, we already know this. That's the one thing. We already know this. There is a life outside of music. It's the fans who look at us and they feel like everything that we say, they hang on to with so much intensity that they try to live it out, and that's where the problem begins. They don't understand that when people are speaking on the record, it's entertainment. It's not supposed to be an edutainment, whereas it's giving you a path to do something. That's not what music was about. Music is about entertainment, whether it be instrumental or be vocal with lyrics. Now, if a person gets on the on a on a track and starts spitting, I'll, I'll keep it up. To, I'll keep it modern. If a person gets on the mic and starts spitting lyrics, and it sounds real good, and then somebody goes home and breaks the lyrics down, and he's saying a bunch of foul shit, and then this dumbass goes out there and actually try to live it, that's not hip hop. What the, it, what the artist is doing is providing entertainment 
That's all I'm going to do. Y'all like that shit? Yes, sir. <laughs> but, you know, for, for me, it was important to, like, to hear you talk about Ed LaRock and Disco King Mario, all the people that the foundation, Who like so many people don't, don't they don't know Hold about them. Hold on, Pete. Yup, yup. Don't jock nobody that hard. That's dangerous. I hope that's. I don't understand that one. That's easy. I'm that's speaking easy to y'all. Look, that's, I'm speaking to that's y'all. That's easy. Look. No, they, no. He was just complimenting what you were saying. That's easy. 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 Rock. My rock. brother. There you go. I'm sorry. Like I said, just you know, just miscommunication. Yeah, that's Give easy. Rock. Peace. Uh, Pete. Peace. Yeah, he no, was complimenting you on what you were saying. All right, I appreciate that. No, what, what was I saying? No, Easy Rockwell was complimenting uh, uh, Just Tyson on what he was saying. Oh, okay, 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 sir. okay, okay. I just read it. Okay, I got you. I got you, brother. I got you. I got you, right. Easy. I got you. I got you. But hey, no, I'm sorry what for cutting I, what you I, off. I'm sorry for cutting you off, man. But no, just to see that guys like Ed LaRock, who, you know, he passed back, uh, his, um, back in 78, I think. So, like, you know, all these guys who laid the foundation who you know were not around to see what hip hop became. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I'm going to keep it 100. I did not know Ed LaRock. You said he died in 1978, right? Yeah. I was going back and forth from Bronx to Brooklyn in my seventh grade. That's when I used to sneak out the house and when Mario would throw parties in Bronxdale, I would go with my friends over there because I was, you know, I was a big kid. I was a big I ain't going to say doofy, but, you know, I was a big, <laughs> I was a big kid, you know? Right. So I used to sneak over there with my friends and say, hey, yo, and I heard about, I, I, rem- I remember vaguely around, I don't know the time, but, you know, you heard your friends, they were like, yo, this guy named Ed LaRock, they killed this kid, Ed LaRock, Ed LaRock, big up Ed LaRock. And at that time, LaRock was big, yet you didn't put LaRock at the end of your name unless it meant something. <laughs> Back then, you didn't put La Rock at the end of your name. And exactly. So as I grew up, as I grew up, I, I tried to, like, find out who this Ed La Rock was. And yo, dog, on some real shit, about two months ago, because you two got this shit, whereas, I don't know, they have this investigative reporting of every bad thing that ever happened in every borough. So I, I put up in the, um, the, the box Ed La Rock, and some shit came up. And you could tell it's old because the footage is like shitty. It's very shitty. Wow. But guess who wow. they mentioned? But guess who they mentioned? Ed, Ed LaRock. No, I'm saying this was about Ed LaRock. But inside of that shit, guess who they mentioned? They mentioned Disco King Mario. Oh, you oh, is, that that first, first, is that that first? Uh, ABC piece that they did? Nah, I don't know. Then I'm saying I went on YouTube. Right. I think that's the first hip hop piece they talked about that, that, that ever happened. I Did don't see that. No, I just pushed in. I just pushed in Ed LaRock. Really? And it came up. Yeah. And I'm like I said, the, you could tell us all because the camera and the pictures are real shitty. But right. I was more or less listening to them. I was. Yeah, they I, just. I had to, be no more than seven, eight years old when that brother died. But I knew wow. about hip hop. I knew about hip hop though. Now, what's next? It's just, it's just a whole lot of things that that happen all over, and it's great when we can hear people tell their story without having arguments and de- debatable things because everybody's entitled to their story about a lot of things that happen. You know, that there's a lot of things that, that happened that people don't know with me and AJ Love Bug. This thing that happened when Pete was coming. This thing that happened in Castle Hill. This thing that happened with Kenny Ken the K Connection. This thing that happened in Whoa, Brooklyn. Whoa, stop. This- stop. Stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> My motherfucking man, Kenny Ken, <laughs> and his little brother, Timmy Tim. Yep. From Monroe Projects. Yeah. He was the DJ for the Mark 5 MCs. He now lives in Brooklyn. You asked Kenny Kim. I was the little nigga there. Really? 
It was my man. It was it was DJ Kenny Ken, um, and his brother Timmy Tim. Yep. The other nigga was DJ Lightning Hands, Billy Boy, and um, it was another. Was it Lightning and, Lance? Um, a peak? Lightning Lance? No, no, not been talking about. No, no, not Lightning Lance. Lightning Hands, Billy Boy. Oh. Lightning Hands, Billy Boy, and Lightning Hands Lance used to go all and and Billy Boy used to tear his ass up. That's why he never liked Lightning Hands Billy Boy. Lightning Hands Lance. You asked Lightning Hands Lance about Lightning Hands Billy Boy. Billy Boy used uh, to tear his ass up. You know that, um, right? You know that, right? No. Yeah. No, because, see, I'm from the South Bronx. The only reason I would be over in your section is when I went to my uncle's house on Commonwealth Avenue where the Cozy Corner was. No, you don't go there. You don't You don't go there. Well, that's why I had go to there. go to. When I wanted yeah. to be over there, I had to stay at my uh, uncle's nah, house. Nah, nah. See, smart people, smart people avoided Cozy Corner. No, but they, listen, their house was on the corner of the block. Which one well, I would have told my relatives, I can't meet y'all ass today. Listen, it was all good then. But I, you know, so I have good my then. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, man, you talking to a nigga from hey, yo, you know, do you realize I used to sit in one building in Castle Hill and watch them build the rest of it? Really? Yeah. Yes. When I when, when I used and, to go down to Salview, wait, wait, I used to go down to Salview. Salview wasn't even completed yet. Nope. That's why I know, I remember how Cozy Corners developed. There was an actual bar or club there called Cozy Corner. And you know who it had its connections to? Remember in Bross River, King Arthur's The, the Night Table on the corner? Yeah, yeah. It was connected, dog. But here's the funny thing. I mean, you know, I, you know, I have a connection with Kenny Cannon. You know, it's just like, listen, back in the 70s, that's where my uncle and them lived at, 542 Commonwealth. Cozy Corner was the Cozy Corner. <laughs> hey, yo, oh, you see, that's what I'm saying. I like this conversation because usually in the interview, they ask about the same old average bullshit. We talk about shit that's on some real inside shit. Yo, dogs, do you, real, do you understand, like, back in the days when Kenny Ken, we used to go to Kenny Ken, in Tim's house on the regular with a Mark Bobby seat, yo. In his back room, that's where Kenny Ken had his, his speakers hooked up and five microphones. Hey, yo, I told Pete I went to Kenny Ken house one time. And like, they brother. Your uh, height. They brother, they older brother. Tim, Tim, Tim. The one that had the hair net on. It was it was Timmy Tim. Tim was the older brother, but he was shorter. No, but they and had another brother, skin. older. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let this one go. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, we talk, talk about that shit because you look like. Hey yo, let's go back to some hip hop shit. Yeah. Now I'm <laughs> might understand. Remember 100 Park? Hold on, where's 100 Park right, at? Right outside of the building. It's Hold right, on, that was their park it's, number. That was their park number. 100 Park is right outside of Monroe. That oh, that was their park. park number. And right, it's, it's right, it's, it's between Theriot and Monroe. Because yeah, but, right listen. on the other side of the two, the Carroll Gardens. Carroll yeah. Gardens is right on the other side. But hold on. Well, hold on, hold on. Motherfucker, I used to go to Kenny Ken's know. house. If you ain't from the Bronx, you don't know this shit. No. It's Carol no. Gardens. Hold on, man. It's Carol Gardens, 100 Park, Monroe Projects. Right, but I never knew it was 100 Park. That's 100 Park. I didn't, yo, I see niggas get shot there while, I ain't gonna say who was playing, while somebody was playing. I remember the night nigga got shot right in his fucking jaw. Wow. But I'm going to tell you one place I didn't want to go to, Monroe High School for a party. Oh, no, no, no. Yo, so AJ. No, nope, you don't go to Monroe High School. 
you get yo, robbed. Yo, Pete, you yo, get yo, Pete, robbed. Yo, check this out. So we live robbed. on the number two. Hold on, but robbed. we live on the two and five line. Me and AJ love, but we live on the two and five line, right? So AJ said, yo, Van, let's go to Monroe High School to this party up there. I'm like, how we getting there? Okay, people, I got kicked off with Just Ice. Yo, I... I guess I went too far and they kicked us off. Let me see, just ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete, just ice. Just ice. Uh, Can't see you. Turn your camera on. Off. Boy, they kicked us off. How come you can't see me? You see me up? Okay. I just shout out to my girl, Golden. I got to shout out to my girl, Golden Brooks. She's watching All right. the TV show Girlfriend. Where oh, Golden oh, Brooks oh. at, man? Yeah, Golden shout out Brooks. to Golden Brooks. Yeah, the real Golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Golden Brooks. <laughs> I don't know where she at now, but she was hey, definitely yo, checking in. I watched that show maybe too many times. Enough respect. Enough respect in all your future endeavors, too. Keep it going. Peace. Just I say so. So as we was talking, I was able to save that episode. I was able to say because Facebook kicked us off. Yeah, we, wasn't, we, wasn't, us off. we weren't being too at a certain point they kicked you off. like that. No, no. At a certain time okay, they kicked okay. you off at a certain limit of time. So I was able to save it. But like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to make this all night thing because there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of great people that was chiming in, and it's going to be up on my YouTube channel, I not in my house of Dan. So chimed in. If it wasn't for y'all. We have no reason to be here. Now I'm doing now. Now hold on. Now I'm doing a free park jam in July. July of what? At the third week. You get in July. You, you get Justin Mantronic to do that. Yeah, the new record there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm around, I'll come around. If I'm not, I'm not. Listen, uh, I need you, brother. Line. I'm not too. <laughs> I can't name. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I can't name. Yo. I told Pete the lineup today. He was like, "Damn, huh?" Will you set your phone? Right. He's fucking with me now. Hey, yo. I like to shout out to my man, man Charlie Let's Prince from Rock Nancy Scott and you Dynamic Three. Hello. Hello. <laughs> damn internet. We'll get man. you up there. It says just ice. Where can we get the new the new joint? Um, bah, 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 bah. I think the other stream the other streaming medias. I don't know the exact names of them, but I know Spotify and Apple Music, and the name of it is called "Get Your Drink On, Get Your Freak On." And trust me, it ain't what you think. It ain't what you think. 
So don't let nobody under um 13 buy this shit. <laughs> it has to be an adult buying this really? because get your drink on, get your freak on might be interpreted in many different ways. Trust me, it ain't what you think. You have to have an ear for music to understand, get your drink on, get your freak on. And prior to that, you have to also, I'm not saying like Cole getting dumb, but respect the motherfucker. That's what it's all Most about. definitely. Just the ace in the motherfucking house. I'm just chilling, yo. Well, i like to say, before we go, any parting words from Just Dice and Pete Nice before we get up? Listen, I just got to say it's incredible, you know, hooking back up with Just Dice after all these years. Unbelievable. Thank you, Van. And, and Van, Van like is the man say, with the plan. Yeah, last time I seen Just Dice, I had a Jimmy. <laughs> last time I seen Just Dice, I had a Jimmy. <laughs> oh, yo, okay. Hey, yo, Van. Oh, my God. I was going to say something, but I'm going to leave that shit alone. Because <laughs> you know the last time I seen you, nigga, you had a lot of hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Go ahead and say it, man. Just I signed it off. Enough respect. Enough respect. <laughs> To all the real, all the real gods and earths, to the real ones. Enough respect to all the civilized nations, man. Because in 2023, a lot of motherfuckers are smart. And they're smart in their own way, but it all contributes to something. Maybe not what you want, but it contributes. Who the fuck is to say who's right or wrong, right? Yeah, just like it's good heart. Yo, also want to say big up, KRS-One. Big up. Big up. Big up to yes, the motherfucking man, DMX. Big up to my motherfucking man, Mantronics. All right. All right. Everybody else, keep your head up. Use common motherfucking sense. Just I right, signing off. I'm out. And shout out to King, Pete, son. My brother, King Pete Nice. Vance. Yo, son, keep that shit. Yo, son, keep that I'm going to holler at you. When I'm ready to holler at you, I'm going to holler. Keep that shit sturdy. All right? Peace. Peace. Peace out, everybody. Peace. Thank you, man. What up, son? Hey, yo, man. We got to get you on Give here. Give me your email. Hey, yo. Peace to Sam. You got right my now, email? So I get off. Yeah, I'm going to get it from Van. And then send me your email and I'll send you a copy even that shit tonight or tomorrow morning. All right, you got it. Can't wait to check it out. All right, Peace. Joe. Peace. Peace y'all. Peace. Nagging House with Van Silk signing out.